Thank you so much for joining us. This is Getting to Know, where we get to know a little bit more about the talent and the wrestlers that make Barry Wrestling so great. And today, I'm getting to know the Golden Gun, Mark Wheeler. Mark, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. So, first question, where are you from and how long have you been wrestling? I am from um, a little lame city known as Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Uh, you know, it's not, it's Hamilton. It's lame. Uh, and sorry, I started wrestling when, you asked? Yeah, how long have you been wrestling? I've been wrestling since 2015. So almost eight years, I guess. It feels longer. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, eight, 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 eight years almost, yeah. And uh, what brought you to Barry Wrestling in the first place? Shane Saber. Oh, yeah? He just drove you up here? Shane, uh, so when I first um, got like the, the, we call it a green light in wrestling to take bookings. Okay. So you're safe and you can wrestle and everything. I was really desperate to, to like travel. So uh, Albright and uh, Saber and like even like the Firefly guys, I kind of met them on passing. But, like I was yeah. still a new guy. I didn't know who the hell I was yet. And then Saber was the guy who was like, oh, come to Barry. And I came to Barry, and he told Sean about me. And then the next show, I got I got to wrestle Saber, and then I've been working here since. So thanks to Sh- uh, Shane Saber, who should be here more often, Sean. <laughs> That's a call out for you there, Sean. There you go. So what were your first impressions of Barry Wrestling, and what keeps bringing you back? So I'm not going to lie to you. I've had, like, you know, it's been a long time. So I, I don't remember the exact day. Yeah. But I do remember um, a good atmosphere in like a very positive locker room. And being a new guy in wrestling, you have to kind of figure out who's who and like you don't want to burn any bridges or step on yeah. toes because wrestling's kind of fighting that way. It's kind of like high school sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I noticed uh, in this one, I didn't feel as pressured to like be scared of anyone getting mad at me or anything. So, or, or whatever it was. Cause you're, and I was 21 when I started, I'm 22, I'm 29 now. So like a couple years of uh, doing this, you kind of like, I guess, I don't know, man up a little bit. So now yeah. I don't really care anymore, but long story short it was a very positive environment and that's all that matters and it's still it's still is very it's very, right. very no, positive it's good, it's good. yeah it's good and uh you are now the golden gun and you've gone through a couple different i think you were the new sensation was that one yep and so you've been through a couple of nicknames so two questions first off where did the golden gun come from you know that you're going kind of the james bond motif and also were there any nicknames that you were like considering but got talked out of or got left on the cutting room floor so many that I don't want to say. Um, <laughs> What's ones. the worst? The worst one. When I get. first started wrestling, I was Mark Muscle. That's bad. Shoot. I w- yeah, well, I mean, and you know what? To be fair, I got a pre-show match um, at a show when I first started, and uh, I didn't have a name yet. I was just training. So I was one of the more in-shape guys in my class. So natu- and I'm, and I'm, I know I was a personal trainer at the time. So naturally, you become Mark Muscle, and then it wasn't good. But that didn't last too long. I, I became Wheeler pre much less than a year later. Um, but j- I was just Mark Wheeler. I didn't have like a nickname or nothing. And then I felt like, like I could wrestle and all that. And I was, I was getting booked and that's great. But like, I felt like I didn't have a personality. I was kind of a guy who was like, um, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm wrestling. Right. Yeah. Even as a bad guy. Right. So the golden gun thing. Um, funny story. It's not about James Bond. Yeah. Everyone. It's, it's kind of like an inside joke. Okay. Um, that kind of got over and then I just kind of stuck with it. Cause it's a cool name too. Um, so, like, whenever I would throw, like, a super kick or something, people said I had, like, oh, it's like the golden gun and golden eye. Like, it's always, like, on point. And I'm like, okay, that that's kind of cool. And then, coincidentally, I was playing Clay Wilson's a dick. Um, we're, keep, we're keeping that in. Yeah, you better. He is a dick. He's a dick. I'm going to punch his face later. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was playing um, golden eye, um, 64, the buddy. Um, and we were joking, and I was talking to this. He's the kind of wrestling fan, so he kind of gets wrestling a little bit. He just told me, like, hey, man, like, you should maybe try Golden Gun. Yeah, it sounds kind of cool. And then I'm like, is anyone doing that right now? And I, I Googled it. I Twittered it. I Facebooked it. Instagram, nothing. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it. So I put a random Twitter post up of just, like, me and I uh, on, like, paying on my computer. It's so shit. Of, like, just, like, sick. Could I, can I swear? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I uh, just said Golden Gun in the picture of me. And I was like, I'm going to leave up there. And, it, and for some reason, it got, like, on Twitter, like, 40 likes. I think I remember that. Yeah. It was, a, it was, a, a picture, it was, a, it was like, a black and white picture of me just, like, in the ring, and I just put Golden Gun in, like, quotes in no context. And I got, like, 45 likes on Twitter, which, at the time, I had a smaller following, so it did something. Yeah. Started doing it. I got a new look. Got, got a leather jacket that's, that is apparently is dead now. It's ripped apart. It's done. <laughs> that's why we're, we're a vest now. Um, but, yeah, it's not what... I mean, I'm a big fan of James Bond. Yeah. So, I mean, Gold S64 is my game. It's a great game. Uh, yeah. I'm, I was better before than I am now, but it was my shit back in the day. So kind of ran with it. And that's uh, there's no, there's no cr- real crazy James Bond story. It's just I list like the name and it kind of stuck. And I have a good aim with my kicks. So I just kind of kept that, you know? Yeah, it worked out. And so, and then you got the revolver. You know, that's also a gun reference. So it, it worked out for you. Revolver is a, a, 
the ref Brad Myers. Okay, One yeah. test match wrestling on commentary said, it's the revolver. And I didn't call it that. And I was like, I'm, well, that's what it is now. But originally, the revolver was a different move. Okay. It was, it was, it was a neck breaker. I used to do, and that no one would make it look nice, so I stopped doing it, and then now I do this one, and it looks cooler, so I stuck with that name with that. The other move from your repertoire, I don't know if you do it anymore, was the springboard off the bottom rope into the DDT. I'll, I'll tell you why I don't do it here Which anymore. I was going to say, and I feel bad because I used to be part of the ring crew, and uh, there was at least once the bottom rope was not tight enough, and it did not once, work. Okay, brother, at least once. <laughs> there was one time when I did it, and my foot hit the canvas. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> so no, that's not a very move. They don't get to see here. Until the rope gets fixed, they don't get to see here. That's that's fair. That's fair. Now, you do have a lot of success here in Barrie. You've been here for a little over six years. You're a triple crown champion. So heavyweight, three pistols, and tag. So you've had a lot of success both as an individual and as a tag. And you know tonight, you're wrestling with Jesse V, locked and loaded, making their debut here. Psychologically, what is the difference between, like, a, what is a big difference people might not know between being an individual wrestler and a tag wrestler? So when you go singles, um, you're more in the spotlight. So it's about you and your partner that you're wrestling, right? Yeah. Um, so everyone has to get across the point of who you are. You know, are you are you an asshole? Are you not? Are you are you are you this? Are you that? What's your character? What's your yeah. what's your story? Whatever it is. Um, so it's uh, and there's less moving pieces, right? Yeah. Tag team, you have four individuals now, so you have all these pieces that have to make sense. Legal. I mean, hopefully the, the tag person is legal when the pin happens. That stuff gets forgotten, gets missed up, so it is harder. Then you get into like six man tags, eight man tags. You have eight, twelve. 16 people whatever the hell it is yeah it gets really messy right so um but as a tag wrestler you get to experience a different side of wrestling because a lot of guys uh and girls just do tag wrestling mm -hmm. so we get to wrestle people who we never got to wrestle in singles because they do a lot of tag stuff so we've gone go to states recently and uh, i mean i've been going there for years but as a tag team with, with jesse first time ever we went to chicago last weekend and uh, and it's just it's just getting our because it's gonna sound bad, but like I don't really care. Um, I'm honest. <laughs> um, I go. I travel a lot for wrestling. I've yeah. been to Europe. I've been to uh, here all over Canada. All over Canada. Um, I've been over the, all over the states for the most part. And and I'll say it. And all the American guys here just suck it up. <laughs> the Canadians are the best wrestlers, bar none. Yeah, yeah. Bar none. They are. I'm sorry. Like like, and there are a lot of people around the world that are, are amazing wrestlers. Like. Right now, top ten in the world, but the sum about Canadian wrestlers that we have this passion behind us because we gotta fight for a visa, we gotta fight for this, we gotta the border's a problem, right? Yeah. If you really want it in Canada and you get it, one day you're gonna get your dream job because you put the work in. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, I kind of forgot the question, but I was kind of rambling. <laughs> but that's <laughs> no, my no, answer. No. It was different chain singles and tags, but that was it. It's funny. I also noticed because I'm I'm driving through the states later this year, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if there's like any indie shows like that I could. So many. But. Like the the density in Ontario is is great. Like we have a lot here. Um, <laughs> so I, we talked about your accomplishments as singles and tag. Now, when you, my first show here, and I mentioned that I was talking to Holden all about earlier. My first show here was the Riot Makers final tag match when you guys lost the titles to Fight or Flight. But you've had you were part of that group, and here it was you, Holden Albright, and Jody Threat, and you've all been three of the most important wrestlers we've had here in Barrie. When you guys worked together, like, did you see the potential? Like, could you have seen this like history that, for you yourself or for all of them, have have had here? Like, did you expect this out of yourself? I want to say yes and no, and not yes for an ego reason. Um, so, everyone in the group, you know. Everyone at the time was a hustler, and we all wanted to like you know be busy, get out there, be very known, and so that's what we did, right? We we and yeah, we all at one point were at Barry. Uh, eventually, uh, uh, it was it was me, Albright, Jody, and Stratosphere. Right, Stratus, who, who's been Barry twice again. Sean, it's a problem. We talked. Strauss is the best person of all time. Anyways, this is this is a Mark Willard getting his friends book show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an asshole. Um, no, but like, yeah, like every you know, and everyone's doing well right now, right? Like, like mm -hmm. Strauss is a little lighter because he's he's older. He, he's he's got a life which I respect. Brent, uh, I was almost a shoot name. Albright is so busy as hell. Jody's busy as hell. I'm busy as hell. So I feel like everyone in that group at the time we're on we're on the same page as as a team and as individuals where we all want just to you know be the best mm -hmm. and 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 a lot of the you know good Ontario talent come through Barry wrestling it's just it's just what it is so um I feel like and this isn't harping on anybody but if you don't try to travel 
this is my advice to young guys. Now, this is this is a, sorry. This no, is hey, no, go. If you're watching this and you're and you're a new guy or a new girl and you don't travel to these shows like Barry or Hamilton or Toronto and you're always sticking your same place, it, I'm sorry, you're you're never going nowhere. Yeah. This is where you get your exposure. This is where you, people know you. You make friends. You get connections. You never know who's watching your your, your matches. For all you know, Regal could be in Barry. You don't know. Yeah. People scout still. It's a little thing, right? Yep. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's just it's important to when you have a team of people. Everyone should be on the same page. If not, someone's got to go. Because it holds the team down, right? So everyone, yeah. everyone, yeah, everyone came through here, and everyone's doing very well. I'm just saying, you know, you, there was you, a big scary guy, and a very athletic, strong woman, and then now it's you and Jesse, who's a big scary guy, and you had Taylor with you I'm for a, big a bit. Scary guy. Okay, but he's, he's a bigger scary guy. He's a guy. bigger scary yeah. guy, and then you got the the very athletic, strong woman and Taylor. Yeah, I'm just saying, you, when you get your trios, you have a type. I'm very picky with who I who I pair myself with because I've worked too damn hard to be screwed <laughs> over. So I have a question for you, and this can be Barry or somewhere else, but preferably Barry. Is there a moment outside of a match, so a promo, or something before, or after a match, that sticks out in your head? The promo or a match? Or, or no, something outside of a match, like oh, okay. a, a moment that has happened here. If not, yes. it's okay. Okay, good, buddy. The one time when I got to kick uh, Jay's Heartless in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and I broke his mask because I kicked him so hard in the face. <laughs> That's my top moment in Bay Wrestling. That was, you were feuding with uh, 705, right? Big man, yeah. yeah. And um, I was so pretty new at the time to Barry. Maybe a year he working here, which yeah. is crazy how, much, how fast time goes. Yeah. And um, I just felt like I kind of outgrew the Jay stuff. My character, I wanted to move on. So I pitched it. It went through. And I had one chance to kick him. And I took it. <laughs> well, I'm, that's, that's, that's my moment. Well, that's awesome. A uh, couple quick questions for the end here. Uh, you've been to Europe recently. With, uh, it was Von Vertigo and Junior Benito as far as like the Barry guys that went with you. Yep. Um, and actually, if you go back, watch another interview with Von Vertigo. He tells the uh, story of Benito trying to order a burger and not swearing, which is a great... I love Junior Benito. He's, he's, well, sorry, real quick. Junior is the most wholesome kid. I tried for a month to get him to swear. <laughs> I, like, I threatened him. I like would, would would hide his stuff. I would like just piss him off, and he would just. It's okay, Mark. I'm like man, I can't. You know, and then it's funny. The first the first couple of days there, I didn't know Junior yet. Now I love him to death. Well, I didn't know him at the time, and so I was kind of like not being a dick, but I couldn't read him because he was too happy. And the first night we were there, or second night, we went to do a show, and the venue got changed to a shitty, dingy venue, and the ring was a little screwed up. And I was in a bad mood because, I, you know, just you want to go there and have a good time, and you don't want to get hurt, right? Yeah. We didn't get hurt, thankfully, but Junior was like, guys, this is great. We're going to have a great time, blah, blah. He was smiling. And I was like, fuck, F this guy, man. <laughs> but after, like, a week, I was like, he's all right. And then about two weeks in, I, I love the guy, right? And he's, he's like a little brother to me. Um, also, Junior has like 19 siblings, by the way. He wrestles a match, and then he'll be excited, and then he'll call a sibling. And then, like, where's Junior? Like, we're leaving. He's on FaceTime. He's still in his gear. Like, Junior, like, hey, your, your brother, your he ninth brother. He's too good for this business. It's insane, dude. You know what? Junior, Junior's going to have a big future, I think. He's yeah. really good. He's humble. And, like, he's, he's, he's the kind of new guy who takes everything on the chin. He'll never argue with you. He'll if, if even if he knows you're wrong, which I'm sure I gave him advice where I've been wrong, or I've been maybe he didn't agree with it, whatever it is, he will never tell you. Which is how I was trained, and then I respect that. But yeah, Junior went to order a burger. It was the funniest thing of all time. That's so great. So yeah, watch the Von Vertigo interview. But my question for you is, what is next as far as countries or areas you haven't been yet? What's top of the bucket list? Japan. That's, I, that's I, a good answer. Yeah, I think my style would work very well in Japan. Um, I'm very hard hitting when I wrestle. Um, they, I mean, they hit hard. <laughs> the girls there. They, I feel bad for them sometimes. They're yeah. they're awesome. Um, it's like a it's like a fight. But the guys there, like, there's, there's something about the presence of Japan wrestling, where it's very sacred. Yeah. And I've been watching it for years, um, on and off for years, and then I've never been like like because you can watch American wrestling and like not be a fan of something or like you know maybe, maybe they're phoning it in or whatever. In Japan, that's not a thing. Like they they, they yeah. go, and and I love that. Like like when I wrestle, like I could be totally banged up and I, like I am right now. Like I'm I'm hurt, but. Once the bell rings, like that's where the passion comes in, and you don't feel nothing. It's just like adrenaline, and, and you already have a good time, right? And then, weirdly enough, I like getting hit hard. Like it like wakes me up. Like I get fired up. So like I've been in fights where I punch in the face, and I'm like, oh, here we go. So it's not good. It's not. It's 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 it's, 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 it's a bad it's a bad addiction in a sense. But <laughs> it got me where I am. So. And so I forgot to say because you were talking about like when the ring. Uh, when the bell rings and you go hard. Uh, my Mark Wheeler outside of a match story was uh, the Canada Day show when it was 40 degrees out. And at the end oh. of the show, because you were like the top bad guy, you just took 
everybody's finish in a 40 degree I was fucked rig. after <laughs> you were you were in bad shape someone gave me a frog splash <laughs> and they just didn't try to keep me safe and I don't know who it is and I won't say names it doesn't matter granted it was hot out the ring was probably sweaty and slippery so I don't, I don't blame anybody but that was the last thing I took was a frog splash and I remember like seeing it and like oh it's the last thing and then my soul just left me and I went man <laughs> I'm, it's also hot outside and I'm pretty sure I threw up after <laughs> What, what what a good time that was! It was so hot. I remember they had a poutine eating contest, and uh, one of our crew won. Which when it's forty degrees out, it was a uh, ref John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he yeah. Uh, won the poutine eating contest. Not a good idea when it's forty degrees out. Horrible idea, dude. Very Canadian. So, I got two questions left for you. Locked and loaded, making their debut here in Barry Wrestling. If you want to see some locked and loaded matches, IWTV. Use the code Barry four hundred. Let them know we sent you. For the Barry crowd, it's our first time. What what should we expect from a locked and loaded match? An ass whooping. Boy, listen, seriously, that's, that's what we do. Um, I know that sounds like very generic, but like we don't we don't screw around when we tag. Um, we work very well together. We're very in sync for being different sizes. We're very in sync. And what's funny is, and it's weird, but it, it, Jesse's a high flyer on a tag team. I know. And you're going to see it tonight. I'm the grounded one. I'll, I'll jump for a drop kick or something, sure, but Jesse will fly 40 feet in the air. It's crazy. His coast to coast, corner to corner, like the coast to coast basement drop kick. It, it, I don't understand the physics behind a man that big going that far. I'm telling you, he's a freak. He is so clay and uh, and John Atlas, um, bunch of losers. They are losers. And you know what? And then it's gonna be interesting because this is my first time Barry not. I mean, hopefully not being booed. Uh, but granted, the the, the cheer, the, the the crowd wanted to cheer me. Yeah, I always got mixed reactions, and I could be the. I, I could I could stab somebody. And they'd be like, I'd be four fans, be like Mark Wheeler. I'm like, all right, well. So, yeah, it's interesting. It's because you grew the facial hair, so your face is less punchable now. That is that what it is? That's the problem. I'm trying to look older, man. That's all I'm trying to do. <laughs> I've got a bay face for a long time. So, I mean, I'm 38. I, I can't. Are you really? Yeah. That's crazy. I think you're like, like 30. Yeah, I know. I, this guy's aging well. Uh, yeah, I'm going to look like this forever, apparently. Good. And so, uh, my final question for you, one goal for 2023. What is a successful 2023 look like for Mark Wheeler? The perfect answer is getting a job, getting signed. Um, I have some cool stuff lined up that I can't talk about for this year um, because I might get it and shit. Um, but um, good stuff happening. I think I, I said when 2022 ended that this year would be my year, and everyone says that, I know. Yeah. But um, I've never thought that before. I've always been like, another year, and then we're going to wrestle, and it's going to be good. Um, I, I think I think this year like I'm really starting to attack what I want to attack and get what I want. And I can't guarantee anything, honestly. Um, but... My goals have, like, honestly, in my opinion, never been closer to being hit. So just going to keep doing my thing. And uh, my, I mean, always, always, you know, my thing is to, you know, and again, I'm not, I have very little ego in wrestling because it's a very ego-filled business. And I don't want to, I, I want to be a guy who people can talk to and trust. As like, it was crazy. It's like, I'm a vet to some guys now here, which is scary to me because I feel old. And my kind of advice, I'm like, oh, I remember being that good. It's crazy. <laughs> Uh, but, like, yeah, I think the biggest thing this year is just to uh, get that if I can. If not, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not going to be upset or anything. I'm, you're going to go for it still. It's, it's my dream, right? And I love wrestling. But I think the biggest thing that I'm going to keep going for is, and I'm thankful that people tell me this, is I'm known as being, v like, a very safe, trusted wrestler that people want to wrestle. And and I've had guys who I, who I respect who I didn't know want to wrestle me, ask to wrestle me. Oh, wow. And it's really cool when you have someone that you looked up to or someone on TV who has pitched your name or something. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, that's wild. Like, people, like, think about you and be like, man, like, I want to work that guy. So I want to keep that going. And then, yeah, my biggest goal, obviously, would be just make a lot more money. But that's always everyone's goal, right? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, and, I mean, you've worked really hard, so all the best, you know. I hope you get there, too. Just remember you, where you came from, you know. And no, uh, never. <laughs> <laughs> and um, finally, where can people find you on social media? I have a very lame handle because my uh, Mark Wheeler was taken at every every version of it. So it's underscore Mark Wheeler. Um, that's kind of lame, but that's what it is. Uh, that's my Instagram. That's my Twitter. So at underscore Mark Wheeler, like one word. Um, I used to do Twitch. But I got bored of it, so that's kind of gone. I Facebook, I don't have anybody, sorry. I got a fan page, though. Just type in Golding on Mark Wheeler. Um, I use it sometimes. <laughs> but it's there. And that's really it, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, all the best. I hope you get... I hope you get to Japan. I hope you get signed. But in the meantime, I'm going to enjoy watching you right here. You can check him out on IWTV. Again, use the code Barry400. You can see all of our Barry Wrestling stuff, all the stuff he's done everywhere across Canada, North America. you got a lot of matches on there. I'm Mike Jeffries. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram, at Mike Jeffries PA. This has been Getting to Know with Mark Wheeler. 
Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Peace.